Oh boy. <laughs> I am hoping for the best now. Uh, I just jumped on a moment ago. My signal was very weak. Unfortunately, I don't have power. I don't have power right now, so I'm relying on my network connection. So I'm hoping, crossing my fingers. So hello, hello everyone. My name is Kara Gott Warner. And this is the first lesson of Stitchucation, and I am broadcasting from the Stitchucation studio. And I'm really excited. I'm really excited. I've been working so hard. Hey, Jana, nice to see you. I have been working like crazy to get this ready for you guys. So let's all cross our fingers and hope that my network works here because I don't have a Wi Fi. Okay, I don't have a Wi Fi, there's no power. Uh, in my in my uh, location here right now, unfortunately. So, uh, but it looks like everything is a go. So I just want to jump in real quick. Hey, Marie. Hey, Elisa. Um, nice to have you guys here today. I'm very excited. So this is lesson one of Stitchucation. And this is for the next three weeks, well, including today. So four weeks, four weeks of lessons. And I'm going to go through this lesson. We have a PDF that comes with it, but in anyway, so you could learn more about how to get your hands on this little PDF. Uh, if you go to patreon.com forward slash power pearls podcast. So this is the guide that we're using. And if you're a patron of the podcast, there are lots of cool little extras, and this is one of them. Uh, and also you get a, a few other goodies as well. So, uh, what is this lesson all about? It's, it's swatching basically. It's all about swatching and we're going to learn to become familiar with a variety of stitch patterns. I've got five stitch patterns and, you know, just being spontaneous and letting your needles do the talking. That's, that's really, that's what it's all about. So I know that you're going to feel very uninhibited. I hope you will after, maybe even after today's lesson, but definitely after this course is over. I really, I, I'm, I have a really good feeling that you guys are going to get a lot out of this. Um, and it's going to help, it's going to lead us into this whole customization uh, process that we're going to be talking about over these uh, four weeks. Uh, and also if you are wanting to, you know, go down that road of becoming a designer and, you know, feeling more confident about that, I think that you're going to learn a lot from this course. So my name, again, my name is Kara Warner and I am the host of Power Pearls podcast. And thank you if you just joined me. I jump on here every Friday for Power Pearls Unplugged, but for four weeks, including today, we're going to have a special workshop called Stitchucation. And you can learn a lot more about some extras about, you know, regarding the course. You can go to patreon.com forward slash Power Pearls podcast to learn how you can be a member and get some extra goodies. Um, and so we're going to jump in. But before we do, I want you guys to introduce yourself if you haven't already to say hi to the group and also why, you know, wh why do you want to take this course? What do you hope to get out of it? Or maybe you're just hanging out because... You just love to, you know, chit chat and, and learn about some new things and get some, you know, inspiration for your, you know, future projects. You know, there's always, there's always so many good reasons, right? Uh, and, but today, you know, if you want to get into some learning, then, you know, that's what, what this is all about. And I'm, I'm incredibly thrilled to do it. And also, please take a moment, if you, if you could, take a moment to share this. Share this with your friends uh, uh, and, you know, anyone that you know that's a knitter that could really benefit from this, go ahead. And, you know, I'm sure all of us, I know, I don't know, 95% of my friends are knitters or in the yarn world. So it's a pretty easy thing to do. So I'm going to just kind of jump in here and say hello to all you guys. I'm really excited to see you. This is a full house. So we got Jana, we got Melanie. Hey, how are you? Your feet hurt, but you made it. <laughs> Jane, awesome. Uh, we have Ben, B, Benedict, I'm sorry, uh, Tammy, Elaine, I, I'm sorry, I always hate when I can't pronounce the name right, Elisa, um, awesome. So we're going to jump in. You guys ready? Woo! I can't hear the clapping, but I'll clap. Yay, we're ready, we're ready. We've been waiting for this for the past several weeks because I've been chatting it up like crazy. Okay, so I'm going to start with what it is that we're going to need to get started. Okay, so what is it? So uh, if you have your, your guide, 
that's cool. I hope you guys printed it out. If you, you know, you also can just, you know, uh, follow along on your tablet or your desktop computer. This is a four page guide, four pages. I, I know that on Patreon I said, oh, it's a worksheet, but you know what? I'm always like over delivering, which I, I just can't help it, you know, and I, cause I really love to be able to help you in this way. But this is four pages of really exciting stuff and uh, includes five stitch patterns in this guide. And, uh, and then at the end, I mentioned a knitting meditation that was inspired by Jody Matt, who is a patron. And uh, so Jody, uh, if you're watching the replay, which I'm sure you will be, thank you so much. What an amazing idea. And uh, I think everyone's gonna absolutely love it. And it's a great, it's a great thing to have at the end of this lesson which you guys can listen to after we're done here because this is all about being uninhibited and really doing the opposite of what you normally think you should do. Like, hmm, that, that yarn says I should use a, you know, a size eight needle. Well, why? Why not try something radically different and go against the grain and see what happens because you'll, you'll always discover something really amazing. So what do you need? So we need some yarn. And uh, in the guide, I mentioned you need three to four balls, but you know what? I got, you should see the yarn that's around me. I got, I got so much, it's crazy pants. But like fingering lace weight yarns, I got some super bulky here. This is one of my favorites. I haven't done anything with it yet, but man, isn't that cool? I mean, it's so inspiring when you have yarn like this. It's like candy. I just want to eat it. Like I'm looking at the screen right now and it looks so cool, so colorful, so bright. This is the perfect place for my video. Um, but this is espresso, this is Barocco espresso, super bulky, and this is a yarn from Plymouth. Uh, it's called Naco Aria Abruli, and um, I love it. It's, a, it's like a, you know, an ombre, an ombre yarn. And then, like I said, I keep buckets of yarn around because you never know. This is a small bucket. I have many larger buckets. Uh, but, uh, and you can see these little baskets all behind me. This is like my, what my house looks like everywhere, you know? There's yarn everywhere. You can't avoid it. My husband is like, oh my gosh, like always there's yarn wherever you look. <laughs> so you need the yarn, right? Of varying weights, really, there's no restriction, just whatever speaks to you. And then needles, you know, of, of you know, just varying size. Here's just a few that I have with me. Um, you know, I don't really, as, as a rule, I don't use straight needles. Uh, I do prefer to use circular needles, and I will tell you that one of my favorites, uh, my favorite brands, it kind of grew on me, uh, Denise. Are you guys familiar with Denise Interchangeables? I think I've, I've discussed those on Power Pearl, um, on Creative Knitting, on the Creative Knitting Facebook page. But like, these are awesome because they easily come off like this, done. As opposed to, you know how some of the others like Knit Picks and, and the other brands, you have to get the little tool and I don't have patience for the tool. I just don't. And Addy Clicks hurt my fingers and I just, no. I mean, I love Addy Clicks. I have a beautiful case of those upstairs as well. But these, these are easy when you want to change size. And I'm going to show you some, a swatch that's really uh, phenomenal. Like you can use needles like this to really super, um, I don't have a, a needle. I thought I brought home like a size 13, but like a super large needle. And then you jump down to a thin needle and use the same stitch pattern. And I'm going to show you what that looks like on seed stitch. And then it just creates like this shaping and you're doing nothing but changing your needle size, which is, is, a, is a great way to design because, you know, you can, you can create a very simple pattern in that way without any shaping with any complex sh stitch shaping you know st um, so that that's a really that's a really good uh little trick that i like to use and others have done it i mean nikki epstein is known for uh just changing needle sizes when she designs so uh yeah there's lots that we can do with that so uh the needles and then this pdf which i mentioned so if you guys are already a patron you can go get it. I'm sure you already have it by now, or you can grab it now and then you can watch the replay. So if you're not a member yet and you really want to get the full benefit and, and you know, it's only a dollar to get all of this, seriously, a dollar a month. Uh, so I'm just being super generous because I want as many people to benefit from this as possible. Um, and then the next thing that you're going to need is your knitting journal. I've sh I showed this to you before in some past videos. You guys know that. Um, knit notes is, I just love this book. 
and uh, I'll show you uh, just kind of like a quick overview of um, of like what uh, you know this looks like. I'll show you a clean page of um, kind of starting from. Well, I'll show you <laughs> my crazy crazy designing notes. But this is this is something that I designed uh, for Annie's signature designs collection, and it's a basis. It's the basis for one of the stitch patterns that we're going to be learning. That's going to be that's in the in today's guide. But anyway. This is the opening page. Uh, this is a typical page in Knit Notes, and you can have all your materials and uh, any other kinds of notes. And then, of course, on this side is our graph paper, uh, which is very, very cool. And then you have a another spread. So you have a total of four pages per design. I always end up going over because I just I'm all over the place, as you can see. But <clears throat> on this page, you know, you've got um, more, you know, stitch pattern, more notes for the actual pattern. Uh, you have a space for a photo, which I didn't. I didn't use. Uh, I don't really because this is this can be used for works in progress. It doesn't have to be for designer designing. So I'm. I don't really have maybe photos because I'm not working on a design that's already existing. And so I'm. I'm doing lots of writing, lots of sketching, because you can see I still continue on to the next spread. So this is really awesome. And then in the back of this book. And there's even more, there's, there's more graph paper. So this was after I finished the design that I'm going to show you in a little bit. Uh, and this will be in future lessons. So this is really, just consider this right now, an overview. So graph paper in the back of this book. So I, I highly suggest, and if you guys, because I've put, I, I think I put this in one of my, either it's a post on Patreon. I'm not really sure if I, it's recent. I can add this to the links. Um, I know you're seeing the reverse because I'm about, I don't have my my rear facing camera, but it's called Knit Notes, and I can add this to um, the comments here. And you guys just shout out as we go along, and let me know if you'd like me to to go ahead and do that. And then the final and the fourth thing that you're you're going to need materials <laughs> is an open mind. Uh, and uh, yeah, I put that in the materials section because I want you to feel uninhibited and also act, feel like you're a beginner. Imagine that you're a beginner completely, even if you're not a beginner. And I know that many of you are just starting out for the first time wanting to go down this customization and this designing path. So what are we going to do? So we're going to do five patterns and they are seed, seed stitch, and moss stitch, my two ultimate favorites, and I'm going to tell you why. They're so super simple, but you know what? Uh, that's why I love them because they're brilliantly simple, and you can do so much and get so sophisticated with this, with these two simple, very similar stitches. And I'm going to share uh, an article that I wrote for Creative Knitting on the blog. <clears throat> I think I mentioned that earlier, uh, but I'm going to share that with you later. Um, and uh, so seed moss mistake rib uh, so maybe some of you are familiar with mistake rib it's a very attractive looking rib pattern um, open work trellis and a mirror lace so I'll start with the so here's 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 this lovely pile might as well be showing you while I'm talking right so we, isn't that beautiful those vibrant stitches so this believe it or not as rich and dimensional as this pile looks this the, this is all seed stitch, all of this right here. There's, and I haven't even shown you moss. And for this particular lesson, I decided, because you know what? There's only so much time, and I'm a talker, so I could keep going on and on, but I want to use the simplest pattern to show you, and that's going to be seed, seed stitch, the simplest pattern, and that you can adapt this to virtually any pattern. But if you understand some of the things that we're going to be doing today, then, you know, you can apply this to even the most sophisticated patterns. So it, any any pattern basically is what I really want to say. So so yeah, that was that was hard to get out. So seed stitch and um, in in a variety of different weights, obviously. So um, here's here's a little swatch. It's hard to see, but really close up, you can see it. Do you guys see that? Beautiful. And this is actually in um, a uh, fingering weight yarn. And now, by the way, these swatches are all pretty much the same weight. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry. I take that back. They are pretty much the same stitch count. But you'll see that there's quite a different range in size to the swatch. Here's another one. So these are very similar. So um, here we go. <laughs> very similar in size. This is a sock 
This is a sock weight yarn. Um, well, they're both, you know, so fingering weight. We've got right here, sock weight, fingering weight. And the fiber content is a little bit different. So when you're making these swatches, you know, uh, you know, you may be using a similar needle size. And one of the observations might be like, how does it feel? How does it drape? How does it look? Because at this smaller size, you can't see the seed stitch quite as well, but it still has a certain delicate look that you could apply to, to many patterns, maybe as a filler stitch, as an edging. Uh, you know, it could be a lining of a bag, right? Because remember, this is, and I'll, same with moss and mistake rib, they're reversible, reversible stitches, and they're very thick and durable. And that's something else to think about when you're doing, um, when you're working on a stitch pattern. If it's a dense stitch, it might not drape very well for a garment, let's say, unless you're using a really fine weight yarn, like something like this. And so here's another one. Uh, this is, um, this is a mohair and it, it's another, um, you can't see that from my perspective, it's, it's actually, there's some light shining through it. So it's a little more open, very slight. Uh, you can see the seed a little bit.